Namaste. So I'm here in Almora near Kasar Devi Temple just for a couple of days. I visited Kasar Devi yesterday and I was able to get this amazing picture. And up from Kasar Devi there's a Shiva temple, very ancient Shiva temple. And here's a shot of the Lingam. So I got her blessing. For what? <laughs> to worship Shiva. She's been pushing me in this direction. Actually, she promised me. Oh, I don't know, a couple of years ago in a dream. That she said, I will bring you to the feet of Shiva. And so now it's actually happening. It's an amazing transformation, an amazing transition. Because up until now, I've had the feeling of pushing. You know, this body runs cool. My temperature is 97. That's my normal temperature. It's supposed to be 98.6, but it's never been like that. So I've always been like pushing to generate heat, taking spicy food, doing different kinds of exercises and stuff to bring heat. But now, now that I've started worshiping Shiva, it's the other way. Instead of pushing, I have to hold back. The too much heat is coming. That's why Shiva is sometimes called Shivagni. Agni means fire. He's fiery by nature. When his third eye opens, look out. <laughs> Somebody's going to get fried. <laughs> so this is the nature of Shiva because he's the destroyer. He's the creator. And he's also the maintainer. Actually, he is Brahman. His real nature is Nirguna. Nirguna Brahman. But he assumes a form, Saguna. He comes into form with qualities and makes all kinds of pastimes. Amazing pastimes. Leela. Uh, just as a, a play, as a sport. Almost like a joke. He's a great joker and he likes to joke on people. And uh, this is his pastime. It's not done in anger. He may show anger, but he's not really angry. That's his nature. He's detached. He's ultimately formless, without qualities. But he comes into the world after creating it and manifests a form just to have a sport, a play. It's like entertainment for him. This whole great universe and all these creations are nothing but his illusion, his maya. And at the end, he destroys everything and goes back into his nirguna state. This is Shiva. This is the Supreme. Even Brahma and Vishnu are different expansions of his for the purpose of universal creation and maintenance. But he is the one who destroys it at the end. So one should be detached, knowing that all this is temporary. All these apparently individual existences are actually just a part of a great whole, the universe. And that is Shiva. So for the last five years, I've been a Shakta. I've been worshiping Shakti. And she has given me so many wonderful benefits. I can't even begin to describe them all. But she has become my personal friend. She comes in my dreams and teaches me and encourages me. This is the most wonderful thing. And when I see 
Kassar Devi, her beautiful and magnificent form, I become overwhelmed and I get Sattvika Bhavas. You did watch the video on Sattvika Bhava, right? <laughs> so, all these things are due to devotion, and devotion is the cause of liberation. Yes, some people perform devotional service in order to get something in this world, but that's not its real purpose. The real purpose of devotion is to attain liberation, to get out of this material existence, to end the illusion, to end the attachment that leads to suffering, and to come to the platform of pure consciousness. And in that pure consciousness, one gets moksha, liberation. Now, actually, this moksha is relatively easy to get. Harder, much harder to get, is the mukti of going to Shiva's planet, being uh, one of his associates in his realm, uh, having his same qualities or same nature, or even his same form, or merging into him and becoming one with him. These are all different kinds of mukti. And these types of mukti are aspired to by great liberated souls, jivan muktas, who, having attained mukti in a previous existence, or even in this life, then they aspire for a higher position to get out of this material world. One who has moksha can live in this world, but be not of the world. But still, there's attachment to the body, and there's suffering because of the body. But when one gets mukti, one transcends this body altogether and gets a body of pure spiritual energy in the spiritual world. That's what we're after. That's what I'm after. <laughs> So now I'm going through this transition of from worshiping Shakti to worshiping Shiva. And it's quite a big deal. Shakti, being the mother, is very forgiving. She's very soft-hearted by nature. Shiva is very strict. He's a perfectionist. He demands perfection from his devotees. And he gives the facility for it also. For example, since I came to uh, get Shiva Bhakti, oh, it's not something you do. It's a blessing. It's a gift. In this case, it's a gift from Shakti. When she sees that you are qualified, that you have sufficient punya and desire. <clears throat> she grants this wonderful thing, Shiva Bhakti, which is indescribable. So since entering into this new state of being, Shiva Bhakti, my life is going through a complete transformation. My body is being purged of all diseases and contaminations. Uh, I'm going to be changing my form of dress and my appearance uh, to be a Shiva Bhakti, Shiva Bhakta, instead of a Shakti Bhakta. So, from going from being a Shakta to being a Shaiva, a Shaivite, is a big transformation. And most of all, I would have to say that the power of sadhana when you worship Shiva is like far and above any other type of sadhana I've ever experienced. It's amazing, really. So what sadhana? Well, I am studying Shiva Purana and I'm learning the Sri Rudram prayers. And um, I'm going to be moving to a sannyas ashram, a Shaiva ashram, in a different part of India. 
and then uh, I'm going to be going farther up in the Himalayas once I have the proper instructions and initiations and go through the necessary transformations. So um, there may be some times when I don't post video for a long time. Don't worry, it's okay. Means I'm doing intense sadhana in seclusion and I'm not going to be answering emails or <laughs> queries on YouTube or anything like that. Uh, that will happen when I take a break. So be patient with me. Um, entering the home stretch, so to speak, of sadhana in this world. The sadhana that leads to complete release. And so it's a wonderful and joyous occasion. Um, and I'm very happy. Um, I can't really express what's on my mind. There are so many things connected with Shiva that are just inexpressible, inexplicable. Uh, the way you, your consciousness changes, your view of the world changes, even from, from going from Shakti worship to Shiva worship, even though Shakti is the left half of Shiva's body, it's still like a complete shift in perspective, a complete change in consciousness. So I'm going to be keeping you updated. As soon as I get settled somewhere, I'm going to start a series on the Shiva Purana. Shiva Purana is very wonderful. You should all read it. Highly recommended. Um, so I'm going to be going into that, explaining it, and uh, giving the uh, summary of the most important uh, sections. Also, we're going to be going more into Sri Rudram uh, in collaboration with my friend Kastub Kulkarni. And we should start that again as soon as I'm settled in one place with a good internet connection. <laughs> so you can look forward to that coming up on this channel. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, but leave a comment and I'll be sure to respond to you because this is really my only reason for being on this planet <laughs> anymore is sharing these wonderful blessings than the amazing knowledge that's coming from the Supreme Lord, Lord Shiva. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.